So we have some interesting Impact Wrestling news today. We have that one tag team has departed Impact Wrestling. We also have an update on Jazz and her match against Diana Peraza coming up at Hardcore Justice. We also have a possible return of a former Impact Wrestling star to the company or to professional wrestling in general after retirement. So let's start off with Reno Scum. You can see them right there because Reno Scum's Adam Thornstow has revealed that he and Luster the Legend have parted ways with Impact Wrestling. Thornstow announced the news on Twitter he wrote about how these are interesting times in the world of professional wrestling and that the plan is to stay relevant after he and Luster regroup. This is his statement. He said, quote, Wow, Reno Scum's time with Impact has come to an end. I'm nothing but thankful for everything they did for us. I want to thank the staff and producers and especially the talent. It was undoubtedly one of the most talented locker rooms in the world until we see you again. Oi, oi, oi. We will be okay. Please continue to support them. These are interesting times in wrestling and we plan on staying relevant after we regroup. Again, nothing but thankful to everyone there. It's hard to put into words, but please know there is nothing but love. Now, of course, Reno Scum had a couple of times of Impact Wrestling, a couple of um, runs there with the company. Reno Scum joined Impact during the Global Force Wrestling merger in 2017. They made the Impact Wrestling debut in March of the same year through October when they were released, but in 2019 Reno Scum did return to the promotion. Their last match was on March 13, 2021 episode of Impact Wrestling on Access TV. They were defeated by Black Taurus and Crazy Steve of the Decay. So it's interesting about this news. Um, Reno Scum are one of those tag teams that look Impact Wrestling. Uh, this is the, I don't I don't want to downplay this because ultimately these are people's uh, jobs and their contracts. Uh, but this is the thing with Impact Wrestling is that a lot of their talents uh, are on very short term deals or their um, deals are just per appearance deals or whatever. As I mentioned, they returned in 2019. Does that mean they were probably signed to contracts? I mean, maybe, maybe. I mean, if you think about it, it's probably that's about two years. Maybe they were on a two year deal. I don't know. I, I really don't know the ins and outs of their contract. I thought they were a decent tag team. I think the tag team division in Impact Wrestling has kind of been a bit like that recently, to be honest, because. Uh, for a period of time there last year, Impact Wrestling's tag team scene was incredibly strong. I mean, really incredibly strong. The fact that you had four top tag teams feuding over the Impact World Tag Team Championships around Bound for Glory time last year, whether it was the Good Brothers, whether it was the North, whether it was Ace Austin and Madman Fulton, whether it was the Motor City Machine Guns, or Alex Shelley when he dropped off, you had um, the Motor City Beer Guns in Chris Saban and James Storm. They had a really tr uh, strong tag team division. Factor in the Reno Scum, Triple XL, all of those other teams. There was there was a lot. There was a lot going on there. Um, in recent months, we've seen tag teams depart. We've seen now Reno Scum go, but we also saw obviously the North split up. Josh Alexander's still with Impact. Ethan Page is with AEW. Does this does this does this departure of Reno Scum really you know fundamentally shake the foundations of Impact Wrestling? Of course, the the answer is no. But it's still a tag team that's departing. Uh, the thing is that I could so, suppose if you want to look at this from a positive point of view, not that, again, it's ever positive that anyone uh, is no longer working or anything like that. The positive you could look at this from is that maybe Impact Wrestling are freeing up some space for some new names to come in. That's possibly a situation. I mean, the tag team division in Impact Wrestling is still strong. As I mentioned, you've still got, despite the, the likes of the North going and despite the Mercy Machine Guns not being together right now, despite that, it looks like... I mean, we might even see AMW back being a tag team. I don't know what kind of shape Chris Harris is in at the moment, considering what we saw on there. I don't think he's in the shape he was back in the early 2000s. But having an AMW reunion would be interesting. I think we're getting closer and closer to having Alex Shelley return to Impact Wrestling. Um, his situation was when he was removed from, or he removed himself from the Hard to Kill paid for you back in January, was that obviously he's a frontline worker and with the pandemic as it is right now, he basically said that, you know, until it's a time where I can get vaccinated and time that the locker room can get vaccinated and the travel is a lot easier, then we'll start doing that. But obviously he has a day job. And essentially the situation there was that um, his day job had changed their protocols about how they interacted with companies and um, the way that they interacted with companies and locations that uh, they weren't doing testing or they weren't having the vaccine yet, all that kind of stuff. But it's getting closer as the world is starting to open up again. Again, we're, we're far from everything being, you know, 
normal and what the new normal is that we don't know at this point but Alex Shelley's getting closer and closer to coming back so that's a positive maybe having an AMW reunion I don't know how long that lasts uh, obviously we know that Matt Cardona and Brian Myers are feuding at the moment but I think there will come a time where they end up teaming together I mean they have to just because of their history um, so there the tag team division is still there this tag team division is still there obviously it has taken some hits um I look at Ethan Page right now in, in AEW, and I know it's early days, and I know he made his debut at Revolution and all that kind of stuff, but I look at him now and I say, what was the, the idea? This was, and this was my concern. Go back and watch the videos. That going to AEW, that is a loaded roster, and you know I'm not one to say that you shouldn't have to work hard to earn your way up, but I just didn't know if that was really the right move for him right then as a single star. I felt that if he wanted to be a singles wrestler, Ethan Page should have stuck with Impact Wrestling for at least a year or for at least a length of time that he and Josh Alexander could leave Impact Wrestling at the same time. Uh, and at the moment, not to toot my own horn, but I think I've been proved to be right in that scenario because Ethan Page made his debut at Revolution. Since then, he had the match on Dynamite, which they had technical issues on, not his fault, but... I saw on AEW Dark Elevation, was that on Monday, that he was teaming with Scorpio Sky and they were kind of hinting that they could be a tag team. And it's kind of like, well, I thought the whole idea, you didn't want to split up as a tag team in Impact Wrestling with Josh Alexander because you wanted to preserve the North. And yet you're now in AEW and you're in a new tag team. How does that work? Surely you should be dedicated and you should be loyal to one tag team partner, not a new one as soon as you go into a new company. I, I think that's interesting. I think that's very interesting to, to think about. So Reno Scum are gone from Impact. And as I mentioned, yeah, they're a good tag team. They were never top of the card or anything like that. We're not wanting to sound cold, but that's the facts. I think the Impact tag team division is still strong and it's still very, very well booked. I think it rivals, I think, put it this way, the AEW tag team division for me is the best tag team division in the world, bar none. The depth of talent they have and the way they book tag team wrestling, I think, is very, very good. There are some philosophical and psychology issues I have with how they do their tag team matches, especially when it comes to, you know, actually referees acknowledging tags or the lack of tags and tag ropes and all that kind of stuff. I would hope that with FTR coming into the company, they would somehow try and fix that and resolve that. And they did briefly, but now it looks like FTR have fallen into a similar pattern, which is disappointing. But nevertheless, I still do think the AEW tag team, tag team division is the best in the world. Uh, and I think second to that, obviously you can talk about New Japan, and they do have a very strong tag team division as well. And New Japan tag team is the Impact World Tag Team Champions right now in Finjuice. They have a strong tag team division, but Impact Wrestling is right up there. I would say it goes AEW's tag team division and New Japan and Impact, their tag team divisions are pretty even, I think, because you do have some really strong tag teams and then WWE's is you know, all the way down there because they don't even think about doing tag team wrestling, any form of justice at all. It's just singles people put together. So it is disappointing for Reno Scum, but I'm sure they'll be fine. Um, hopefully with the independent scene opening up a bit more over the course of the next few months, they should be fine as well. Now, there is some other things I do want to talk about when it comes to Impact today. One being possibly the return of Davey Richards because it looks like he could be coming out of retirement very, very soon. Now, according to a report from PW Insider, former Impact Wrestling and Ring of Honor star Davey Richards is close to signing a new deal that will lead him out of retirement and back into the squared circle. Richards is close to agreeing on a deal to return at Global Syndicate Wrestling's Catalyst show on May 22nd in Ridgefield, in Ridgefield Park, New Jersey. Uh, the show is the promotion's second ever event. Now, although the deal as of yet has has not been finalized, this will be Richard's first time back inside the ring since his retirement in 2017 to become a firefighter. Now, of course, Richard's career uh, is incredibly well documented. He's a former six-time TNA World Tag Team Champion alongside his longtime partner, Eddie Edwards, as the American Wolves. And his last wrestling appearance was at CZW's Evolution event on July 8th, 2017, where he lost the CZW World Heavyweight Championship and Defy World Championship to Shane Strickland. Now, does this mean he's coming back to to Impact Wrestling. Uh, at the moment, no. And it's not even been confirmed that he's going to be signing this deal uh, with the uh, Global Syndicate Wrestling's Catalyst for that show either. I think the reason that it's newsworthy is this could be seen as uh, David Richards dipping his toe back into the world of professional wrestling. Uh, and if that is the case, then Impact Wrestling would be a fool not to reach out. And I think that would be, and I think that would be in their interest, and in Davy Richards' interest, and in anyone's interest to see him come back to Impact Wrestling. As I mentioned, does this mean that he's definitely going to be coming back to Impact? Does this mean that it's guaranteed and all this kind of stuff? Absolutely not. 
but if he's dipping his toe back into the world of pro wrestling, we know how Impact Wrestling uh, deal with their contracts and deal with their talents. I spoke about it earlier when I uh, mentioned Reno Scum and some of the other tag teams and, uh, and talents that have been working Impact Wrestling tapings. That Impact are very, very loose. Uh, arguably, they're one of the m most loose uh, promotions when it comes to how they negotiate with their talent. They're very open. That's why they have people like, they had Alex Shelley appear at all those tapings. That's why they have people like Matt Cardona appearing for Impact Wrestling at the moment. And basically, they'll say, look, if you don't want to be tied down to a long-term contract, that's fine. If you've got other things that you're doing outside of professional wrestling, like Alex Shelley uh, working in the uh, medical field and all that kind of stuff, again, that's totally fine. We tape once or twice a month. You don't have to be locked into a contract. You don't have to be locked into an exclusive contract. If you want to work on a just per appearance deal, if you want to come in for a couple of tapings, work an angle, and then disappear, if you want to scratch that wrestling itch, as it were, that's totally fine. Now, in the past, it's come back to bite um, Impact because they've lost a few talents to WWE because of that, but that's how they work, and that's how they realize that actually they can get in a lot of talent that maybe they wouldn't be able to get in because they're so flexible with their working arrangements. If that's the case, and if Davey Richard is interested in working in professional wrestling once again, even if it's very select dates, and he's still going to be a firefighter, which is, uh, as I'm, uh, I think is the case right now, if he's still working in that field, uh, but he does want to do some pro wrestling once or twice a month, then Impact Wrestling can work with that. They can reach out and say, look, come back, work an angle of Eddie Edwards, I spoke about the tag team division, maybe do an American Wolves reunion and then feud again, because they did do the feud in Impact Wrestling back in around 2017. Uh, that was the whole... Um, thing with Angelina Love, I think, as well, although they're not together anymore. Again, all that kind of stuff, they can they can figure all that kind of stuff out. And as I mentioned, Impact Wrestling are incredibly flexible at the moment when it comes to talent contracts. So I think it's interesting because if he is interested in coming out of retirement, then I, it's, there's, there's no, there is no way he, that he won't get a call from Impact Wrestling or at the very least Eddie Edwards to say, look, you're interested in coming back. Do you want to work something out? Because it's money. It's money. It's history. There's... There's a lot of, um, th th there's always going to be history between them both. And whether that's, again, being a tag team, being rivals. Personally, we've seen them do the rival thing a couple of times. I think the money is to be a tag team, again, and especially in that tag team division uh, that I spoke about earlier. That is, does have some great teams in there. Could you imagine doing the American Wolves versus the Good Brothers? I think that's that's money. That's a money angle. So who knows when it comes to Davey Richards. The fact that he's accepting a booking or close to accepting a booking is very interesting. So we could possibly be see, be seeing something in the future. And finally, what I wanted to talk about was Jazz because uh, Impact Wrestling have posted a, uh, a promo on social media where uh, Jazz is sending a warning message to Deanna Perazzo prior to their career versus title match at Hardcore Justice this weekend. Now, I don't think anyone really expects Jazz to win the match. Jazz coming into Impact Wrestling anyway was a bit of a surprise because she had retired or she had announced her retirement in an interview with Chris Van Vliet. She came in as part of the Knockouts Tag Team Championship Tournament with Jordan Grace. And I think people thought at the time, certainly I did, the videos are out there, uh, that Jazz would come back for this tournament, they wouldn't win and then she would go. And uh, at the time when she had announced her retirement to Chris Van Vliet, she'd essentially said, look, physically, emotionally, mentally, I just can't, can't do it anymore. So I'm going to retire. Now she had planned to do this big retirement tour in 2020. And like with everything last year, when it comes to the independent scene and just the world in general, because of the pandemic, she had to cancel it. And she thought, well, it just wasn't meant to be our retire. Impact Wrestling have afforded Jazz the opportunity that she deserves to go out on her own terms, have some great matches. She'd never been in Impact Wrestling before as well. And she's been fantastic. I mean, if anything, it's sad to see that she is still probably going to retire. And it's sad to see that she's going to finish up because she's, she's a legend. She is a legend. I mean, I grew up watching Jazz matches in ECW and WWE, and she still, she still really does ha have it. Um, but I think there's no doubt she'll defeat Deanna Perazzo and it's the right thing to, obviously, as you're leaving a company, to put over the young talent, the young champion. Deanna Perazzo is the face of the knockouts division in Impact Wrestling. She's the face of women's wrestling in Impact Wrestling. And over the course of the last 12 months after leaving WWE and now with Impact, she's grown into one of the real prominent female wrestlers in the world, which I know is a big statement. But it just feels crazy now that you've seen the matches that Deanna Perazzo has had over the course of the last 12 months, whether it's against Jordan Grace or Ty Valkyrie or Sue Young or now Jazz, uh, that she was released by WWE and they couldn't find anything for her. It just it just seems crazy, doesn't it? Because she is so talented. So I expect Jazz to put her over in the best way possible. Uh, 
I had heard, and I don't know if this is still the case, I had heard that Jazz was just basically planning on doing her retirement tour uh, for this year. So this might be a case of her leaving or finishing up her commitments of impact and then finally doing this tour uh, where she eventually retires at the end of it. But it's certainly going to be emotional and it's certainly it's a big deal. Obviously, Impact Wrestling are trying to get some trying to get on that train of uh, wrestling interest around WrestleMania week. Uh, obviously, uh, Hardcore Justice is on the same day as night one, isn't it, of WrestleMania, but it's airing earlier. So maybe maybe we will see maybe we'll see a big bit of news with Jazz uh, leaving Impact Wrestling. I think that's probably going to be the case. But of course, as always, it's just one man's opinion. What are your thoughts on some of the Impact Wrestling stories we've spoken about today? What are your thoughts on Reno Scum departing Impact Wrestling? Possibly Davy Richards returning professional wrestling and Jazz's warning to Gianna Perazzo ahead of their Knockouts Championship match this coming weekend. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'll do my best to respond and reply to all of your comments. Really enjoy interacting with you guys. Talking about Impact Wrestling, AEW, WWE. New Japan Pro Wrestling, all things pro wrestling here on the channel. So be sure to get involved in the community, drop a comment below. All opinions are welcome. If you have enjoyed this video, please do smash a like on the like button too. Really does help us out here on YouTube, go the rankings and get into people's recommendation feeds if they haven't seen our videos previously. But most importantly, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to Wrestling News 365. You can do that by clicking the bottom right hand corner of the screen right now. Or if you wait a few seconds, there'll be a subscribe button at the end of this video, along with another video for you to watch. Thank you very much for watching, listening, streaming, or have you come across this video today and i'll speak to you again very very soon hey guys thank you for watching listening streaming or however you come across this video today be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video or click the bottom there to subscribe or the bottom right hand corner thank you very much and i'll speak to you again very soon